Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 10 of Night Call and today we are going to... Hmm, what are we, what are we gonna do today? Okay, I, I wanna go there. I just need to see what's happening here. I still don't get what happened here, that we couldn't do anything. Maybe I just missed something when I looked away, but okay, at least it does something now. Okay, Argentinian embassy. Wait, wasn't that about the, the our female suspect? But she's out of the picture again, so will it really be of any use? Well, we'll see. You park a few streets away from the Argentinian embassy. You wait there for your contact. You sigh. It seems so odd to have a contact. So excessive. The guy is one of your regulars, poker buddies, a night watchman at the embassy. You get out of your taxi and walk towards the big metal gate. Clean lines, early 20th century, maybe. Lots of wrought iron. The gate opens and someone moves towards you. They indicate you should follow them. The person's face is hidden by an oversized hoodie. Here, your heart starts beating faster. What if it was... Who are you? It's me, Jamie. You're David's buddy. You immediately recognize his accent. You don't feel like you're in any danger and decide to follow him. You walk into a narrow covered passageway, probably the entrance to a parking garage. The man turns around and lights up a cigarette. The lighter lights up his face for a second, a young man with curly hair, pale skin. He looks young, very young. That will be 250 euros. What? Is it worth it? I don't have that much money. I got as much as I could, so yeah. You want information on Gorodisher? I got info on Gorodisher, and it will cost you 250 euros, so what will it be? Uh, can I bargain about that? I don't have so much money. I don't have that much money. Bargain. He raises his hands in front of his chest. His accent becomes stronger. Uh-huh. No, it's 250 euros or nothing. I'll take... No. I'll take... If someone learns I fished around, they'll fire me on the spot. I hope I can pay. You don't have enough money to pay. You lower your eyes and pretend to change your mind. <sighs> your loss. The young man walks by you, almost shoving you aside and keeps going. You hear the embassy door open and close with a heavy bang. A second later you're back in your taxi. You shake your head in disappointment. <laughs> no! You start the car and get back to your shift. <laughs> no, I hope I can get back at some point. I hope I can give this another try. No? Damn it! Why am I so poor? I know I why I know why I'm so poor. I'm always driving a bee around. <sighs> well, who are you? I think I never know. You immediately recognize the passenger who's climbed in the back seat of your car. Really? I do? His face has been plastered all over the news for the last few weeks. Oh, okay. He's a lawyer. A lawyer who is representing a terrorist. Oh. He gives you an address and you start driving. He holds your gaze in a rearview mirror like he's trying to read your mind. You drive across a virtually empty Paris. Behind you, the lawyer nervously consults his notes. Everything all right? He answers without looking up. Mm, yes. You get the message and leave him alone. You continue driving without saying a word. Your passenger mutters. Oh, why did he say that to the cops? He's not taking this seriously. He doesn't get it. Idiot. There again. He says it again. <sighs> Ugh. You glance in your mirror. The lawyer looks like a smaller version of himself. Sure everything's alright? Yeah, I'm sure everything's alright. You can just... Uh, let's just ask him, whatever. He's cl he closes his eyes and remains silent for a while. You see him start to break. I... I... I can't take it anymore. He takes a deep breath. He loses control of his voice. This guy is a real asshole. He's not just a monster, he's a total idiot. Tears from a form at the corners of his eyes. Oh no. I've never seen such a moronic defendant. You know what it's like to defend a moron? 
You know what it's like to get only three hours of sleep at night so you can defend a fucking moron? Do you have any idea? He yells so loudly the windows shake. Mm, I'm sorry. When he answers his voice is icy cold. No need to apologize. There's nothing to be sorry about. He pauses barely, just in time to take a deep breath. Jesus effing Christ already! He kicks the seat in front of him. Jesus! He calms himself down. He steadies his breath. I'm the one who agreed to it. I actually fought to represent him. It's my own damn fault I'm begging and being dragged through the mud. He raises his hand, snickers. Yeah, I admit it. At first I thought it was pretty great. Being on TV, all the interviews, journalists, asking my opinion about everything. Shook so many hands, said so many words, sentences, yet I actually said nothing. When I worked in the hood, not a single person cared about my work. And now, in five hours, I have to be on the radio, and seven on TV. Wait a second, is he... is he our suspect? Am I stupid? He pauses, briefs, his voice sounds further and further away. He should get some rest. You need to try to calm down. I don't even know what that means anymore. Actually, it's simple, I almost never sleep. When I lie in bed, I stare at the ceiling and go over the evidence in my head. He sits up. It's barbaric, disgusting, so horrific it's almost unreal. He lets out a sigh from somewhere deep in his body. And then I discover my client bought nails. The nails that were in the bombs at the corner market and he kept a receipt. He kept the fucking receipt. Folded it in half and slipped it into his wallet. That's what I see when I close my eyes. Disemboweled bodies and a receipt for two euros worth of, of nails. Why? He raises his voice quite high. Why, for God's sake? He thought he could expense it when he got to heaven? He pauses. So stupid and so dangerous. He disgusts me. He revolts me. Why defend him then? Because everyone has the right to an attorney. Everyone without exception. Otherwise, justice is no longer just. That is true. His fit of rage subsides. His fingers are shaking. When I signed on, I thought I'd be representing someone crazy. And I find out he's just a moron who's played too many video games. The guy has never even read the holy book they used to justify their so-called acts of martyrdom. He read a few passages online. Passages online. Do you have any idea what a complete moron he is? He chuckles. I, I'm sorry, I'm truly sorry. I shouldn't have said all that. He takes a deep breath. I don't have anyone else to talk with about it. All the other lawyers avoid me like the plague. My mother can't understand why I'm doing this, so she's ashamed she went back to Algeria. He's shaking. I get the shame. What I don't get is when people just lump things together. I am not a terrorist. I am not a murderer. No one else would do it. He's a terrorist. He's a terrorist. Yes, and that's why we need to do more, to prove to all these extremists, these terrorists, that we're better than them. That alone keeps me going. Because, let me be frank with you, his voice is suddenly extremely calm. We could hang him right here, right now, and no one, no one, I'm telling you, would shed a tear. He stays quiet for a moment, catches your gaze. That's why I keep doing this. He slows his breathing. For equality, our country was founded on it. These rights have been abused far too often for me to look the other way. His anger seems to be lifting. The taxi has almost reached its destination. In the backseat, the lawyer is much calmer, his voice is soft. I needed to be reminded of this, this will serve as a lesson. He looks at you in the mirror and bores into you with his gaze. It's odd, isn't it? That I ran into you tonight, I mean, as if, as if... No, forget it. You pull over, he pays his fare. Oh, wait, don't take this the wrong way, but... He hands you another bill. Here, this is for you. For listening, for hearing what I had to say. 
I'll take it. You slide the bill into your pocket. <laughs> he looked relieved, gathers his belongings strewn across the back seat. Maybe it wasn't correct. As he's getting out of the cab, you realize he left an envelope behind. For a second, one tiny second, you hesitate. It could be something important. Oh my... No, 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 no. Um, shall we say nothing? Or shall we say something? I mean, it could also be unimportant and then... No, you forgot something. I mean, I already took money from him. I, you forgot something. He freezes, notices the envelope and grabs it hastily. You can tell he's uncomfortable. He doesn't say another word. He gets out of the taxi, walks a few steps away and turns around to wave at you before entering a bistro. You drive off. Oh well. There aren't a lot of people to pick up tonight, are there? So I'm really not sure because I think he could be um, one of our suspects. He could have been, but I'm not sure. Let's just remember his name, Salim something, and then take a look at home. You're driving along when a strange burnt smell suddenly fills the cab. You look around, sniff, is it coming from outside? Um, park. Don't want our car to go up in flames. As soon as you see a free spot, you pull over and park. You freeze. Something. Or someone is in your taxi. No! We're, go we're going to die. A woman's voice resonates around the cab. I can't. I need a better signal. Oh, another ghost. I'm here. I'm here. You turn around slowly. A young woman has appeared behind you. Don't shout. I'm afraid I'll lose the connection. I don't have much time. There's something strange about her face. It's as if she is several different people at once. Listen to me carefully. I come from the future and... You must know that you met... She stops moving like a computer glitch. She stays this way, still frozen. She's a time traveler. Then she suddenly starts moving again. Fascists in suits with tons of money and control of social media. In 2037, he decides to cleanse Europe, literally and figuratively. She stops herself. Shit, I'm breaking up. She lowers her head to speak to someone else. The signal is unstable. She turns to you, her eyes are sparkling. A coalition led by the Iranian president and a few African leaders managed to find a remedy, but it's too late. The human race has been almost entirely decimated. She looks at you. They sent me to look for more information on Hiyoga, but also on other people you may have met. Does, does Sean Jackson sound familiar? You shake your head slowly, no idea. He went to mime school. She smiles coyly. I know what you're thinking, but I'm serious. She shakes her head. Tragically serious. I don't know who you're talking about. Well, shit. I'm too late in the game. They sent me to the wrong moment. I... She snaps her fingers. Annabelle Robert, a photojournalist. Her reporting will... Her voice suddenly starts to crackle. Reveal the existence of underground laboratories. She absolutely must go to Syria. Oh, we know her. We know her. She, she was in our car before. We know her. That's the yoga girl. Life depends on it. The radio starts blaring incomprehensible voices like it was picking up a secret station. No physical contact. You will not get a second chance. The seat behind you is suddenly empty. The young woman is gone. The radio stops. Nighttime silence takes its place. For a second you wonder if you were dreaming. You slowly breathe in and start driving again. We know her. Annabelle was the one that, that we drove to the airport. Oh, hey, and it's Emily and her wife again. And it's the, the crazy guy again. Hmm, I think we should need... To 
I think we should go to the gas station first. Oh, I can't we? What is happening? Okay, can we go here? Did my game just crash? Okay, something's wrong. I have no idea what just ha happened. What the hell? I don't understand <laughs> what just happened. Because we didn't meet her. Wait a second. So we have been to this embassy thing, so we can't go there anymore. But we also... Huh? No, wait, because we have the same... How does... What? I have no idea what's just happening. But it feels like we just stopped. But it is the same um, time that we have. So we lost some time. We have been to the embassy. I have no idea what's happening here. And I have no idea why I couldn't do anything. Why I couldn't move anywhere. I don't know what happened. I am really bad on money at the moment. Okay, that should be okay. Let's talk to the guy. Smell coming off the guy running the shop at the station. <laughs> Fried food. Welcome. He sighs beyond tired of repeating the same sentence over and over. To La Belle Romp. Or Pomp, I don't... Pomp, it was Pomp. Say, so a guy like you, someone who spends most nights here, you must know something about the killer, right? He raises his head and seems almost happy you brought it up. Ooh, yay. Thanks, and now we're leaving. Guy behind the counter belly looks at you as you leave. You got into your taxi and drive away. Okay, so we got a little bit gas again. Who are we going to drive? The crazy columnist? Or shall we meet someone new? Although I would like to know what happens with them. I mean, they pay good. So let's do that. It's us. The same place as usual. Home. Aw, they know us already. And they pay. Good, so let's just do that. The passengers get into your cab and recognize you immediately. The younger woman, usually quieter and more reserved, bursts out laughing. I don't believe it. We were just talking about you. Incredible. They give you their address and you start the car. You immediately realize they've had a bit too much to drink. Again? The older woman gives her wife a worried, perhaps even upset look every now and then. We had another date tonight. She smiles. And it went really well. Yeah, it was definitely better than the other ones. You don't seem very enthusiastic. It's just that, I don't know. The younger woman gives a sorrow laugh. She's jealous. You're jealous, it shows, you're green with envy. I am not, that's ridiculous. The younger woman leans towards you. His name is Damien. Another Damien? Come on, they met one already, right? How many Damien's are... Daniel. What? This is the same conversation that... How small is Paris? <laughs> Daniel. Uh, yeah, right, Daniel. An incredible musician. He's a composer. He plays with well-known musician. He tours. A real artist. She sighs dreamily. Maybe, but the last thing he did was an ad for those pizzas with cheese crusts. They're so good. <sighs> Darling, he makes music for television ads. And? <sighs> and like the day before yesterday, you turned off the TV, you were so sick of that music. It sticks in your head. Besides, I didn't realize how much work goes into it. Sudden silence. You can tell they thought about this before. So, have you made up your minds? No, but we'd better soon. She leaned over towards her wife. 
So who's it going to be? We promised to let them know before the holidays and... I don't know. I really like Daniel. Yeah, we noticed. Well then tell us, please. Tell us what is you don't like about Daniel. Unlike those other guys, he isn't stuck on himself. He seems stable, healthy and fairly intelligent. So... An uncertain pause. Well, there's something about his face. I don't know how to put it, it's just he has a sort of weasel look. A weasel look. A weasel. Laughter in the backseat. Uh, yeah, a weasel. He doesn't look honest. He was picky about the wine, he hassled the waitress for more peanuts, and as soon as the subject of money came up, there was something a little off in his eyes. She shrugs. The younger woman opens her mouth, but is immediately cut short. But, but, but we said we decide together. We just see the guy twice, then bye-bye. So it's no big deal. Their eyes meet. I want to be done with it, or rather, to get it started as quickly as possible. I'm tired of waiting. A pause. And you don't want the baby to be born in winter, I know. Well, I love you, and I want to have the family we're always talking about. That we're always fighting about these days. Exactly, and that means we have to make our choice, so... There's Damien, athletic but pretentious. And Phil, good-looking but macho. And now Daniel, talented but annoying. They're holding hands now. What's your opinion? Time seems to be at a standstill. You hardly notice you've almost reached your destination. Daniel. I like the fact he's an artist. Because neither one of us is very artistic and it would be nice for our son before her partner can speak, she adds with a touch of venom. Or daughter, right, I know, you don't need to keep saying it. I didn't say nothing. No, but you were thinking it. But I didn't say anything. A pause. You've had too much to drink. Her tone is bitter. So what? I don't like it when you've had too much to drink. You don't have to be so obnoxious obnoxious she bursts out laughing please you're really you're the one who drinks too much and i'm the one who has to take you home it's my turn the w they withdraw into a suffocating silence you pull up to their address the less drunk of the two pays the fare without a word they get out of the cab the drunker of the two stumbles her wife just about manages to catch her is everything all right no answer they ignore you or maybe they didn't hear you. They walk towards the entrance of their building. As they disappear from sight, you notice they both have sad looks on their faces. As if, as if it was all over. Done. The light in the hall goes out. You drive away. No! They didn't tip me either. Oh, that's so sad. I liked them. RV for God no I'm gonna drive all this way up to this guy and hope he pays better or at least he will pay something I mean RV is a good guy and all and he's nice but Ooh. oh there are a couple Camille Riviere and Antoine Parmentier yeah my boyfriend and I headed to Vincent. Okay. Well, they pay good, so let's hope that they have a nice story or whatever. A couple gets in your taxi. If you add it up, their total age cannot be more than 40. They glance at each other nervously and occasionally grab hands affectionately. He speaks first. Despite being built like a tank, his voice is soft and a bit hesitant. Um, Vincent, please. You detect a southern accent. Do you have an address? Um, the castle? She gives him a look and he tries again. Uh, the metro station, actually. You start driving. 
couple is whispering in the back seat. The words are sometimes covered by the sound of the radio, the street noise, and the motor. Idiot, the castle. You think we're going to sleep there? Yeah, but I don't know where to. You smile. Passengers always think you can't hear them when they whisper in the back of the cab. No big deal. The hotel is right next door anyway. Actually, though, you can hear everything. That hotel of yours? I'm just not feeling it. Why? I'm just not... That's all. On their website, it looks old with tiny beds. We can get a double bed. I'm just not feeling it. A moment of silence. What should we do then? We could ask him. Who? The driver. The boy raises his voice. What? Aren't you crazy? They glance at you, hoping you haven't heard anything. <laughs> you must know some hotels, I'm sure of it. Go ahead, ask. You'll think it's strange. The guy's a taxi driver. I'm sure people ask him all the time. Me? Why me? You're the one that doesn't want to wait for my parents to leave us their place. That's not why. It's just that your room is too... Too what? There are posters on the wall and well... Oh, come on, please. Stop with your excuses. You're just afraid of my old man. Awkward silence. Go on, ask. She rolls her eyes. Oh, fucking loser. She looks at you. Hey, uh, sir? Yeah, <laughs> you looking for a place for the night? Okay, no, let's just pretend we didn't hear anything. So, here goes. We need some advice. My boyfriend and I are looking for a hotel in Vincennes. Something not too pricey, but clean with a double bed no one cares about the double bed Antoine he doesn't give a shit um you shouldn't be doing this what uh, well no it's not our thing to uh, butt into this I know a few places in Vincennes is it safe you are not. Uh, yes yes I'm a professional miss thank you the couple has begun whispering in the back again you okay? We should have waited until my parents left. Shit, I'm sorry, it's my fault. I tried to rush things and... Are you kidding? I'm the one who's in a hurry. They look at each other and burst out laughing. You're sexy. <laughs> You're an idiot. We start laughing again. Seriously though, if you want to wait, we'll see when we get to the room. Yeah. They look deep into each other's eyes. You don't pay them any attention for the remainder of the ride. They continue cooing in the back. They warm the taxi up with their sweet words that float up to your ears. You stop the taxi in front of the hotel. It is a small, discreet building, no frills or fuss. Yet it gives off a warm and welcoming impression. This is it? It looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I know the owner. She will welcome you with open arms. They remain silent for a moment. This is it? She glances at her boyfriend. Uh, let's see how much it costs. We'll wing it. We'll wing it. Yeah. Yeah. They got out of the cap. Oh, well, I hope you're not going to wing my prices here. The young lady hands you her fare through the window and walks away without saying a single word. They disappear into the hotel nervously. 16 cents of tip, really? Oh my. Okay, well, that was a pretty interesting ride. Um, we are going to do the second half of the night in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.